switch gears and uh, I'm going on the, on the wind vane now. Now, I'm not really mounting it right now. I'll probably do that tomorrow or Saturday. But I would like to get an idea of where exactly I want to put it because I have the nameplate on the back here, um, which maybe we can show you a little bit later. And I want the wind vane to mount around that if I can because I don't want to take the nameplate off because. I like the name. That would suck. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to bring out all the mounting hardware from the wind vane and see exactly what can we do here to get it, get it to work. Can I step back here? Yeah. It feels precarious. Yeah, you can step back here. Y'all, um, hi. If you don't know, now you know, I'm fucking terrified of heights. And being up here, I feel like the boat is swaying. Even though I know that it's not. But I feel like it's swaying because I'm... It's really high. You can't tell from here, but it's really high and I don't like it. Hard to do this with a busted thumb. I should have busted your thumb. Well, has to go on a wedge. Okay, so since the platform is slanted, and these are coming straight out, I'm gonna probably have to build a wedge for these to sit on, so they sit nice and straight. Here, let me see your, let's see your phone. Hold on. Let's see. So you can see this, I mean, it's not straight right now because it's just hanging, but uh, this, I want it to mount up above the nameplate. You can see the nameplate here. So up above the main plate. So if it sits flat, the tube coming off of there won't line up. So it's gonna have to be wedged to bring it flat like that. So I'm gonna have to create a wedge to get right in there. So we'll have to measure that out. I think the easiest thing to do is to get these two top guys mounted so the thing will be nice and square. So that means making those wedges first. And then I can mount the bomb pieces because the bomb piece is gonna have to be mount it at an angle in order to fit the fit it so we'll measure it out and i'll be able to cut some things to size and then we'll be able to mount it and we'll be good to go we'll see so oh, yes yesterday we talked about having wedges for the wind vane so my dad made these awesome teak wedges so i'm drilling the holes for it right now uh, to get the bolt holes to line up so i'm going to do that here because it splits really easy so I want to make sure that it turned out okay a little bit of you can see a little bit came off there but it's not bad nothing some 5200 won't, won't fix and there you go that's one bracket made we got these wedges made and now I'm kind of marking out where they're gonna go on the back here just above the nameplate because there should be room back there to drill a hole through and put a nut on the other side I kind of want to get them as low as possible is my goal. So I kind of got them sitting kind of on top of the nameplate. And then these little brackets will go right on top. So we'll see what it looks like here. I hope it works. Drilling holes in the boat's not fun. Not a fun feeling. Always measure like six times to make sure. That's 15 to each. All right. 
measure just about as much as I can. So. Does that mean we start drilling into the boat now? That means we start drilling into the boat. Ugh. That sounds scary. Yeah, it is. I don't like that. So we can at least get it started, and then I'll. No, that's okay. There we go. Okay, I got, got that started. Now, now go in straight. Yep. Probably should be wearing a breather for this, huh? That's okay. All right, clean it out. All the crap. <laughs> All right, hole number two. Up a little bit more. Nice thing about fiberglass is I can kind of widen it a little bit if I need to. I think. Yeah, I see what you mean. I wasn't completely straight. There, that'll be okay. All right. Next one. Nope. Up a little bit more. Like so. All right, we'll test that one too. That seems to be okay. Yeah. Cool. That ah, looks good. All right. Yep. Everything looks good. Let me put both of them in there. At this point, the holes are drilled for the upper mounting brackets and 5200 sealant has been applied to make sure everything stays watertight. I'm currently underneath the transom doing some boat yoga, trying to get underneath and around the aft bench seat so I can install the fender washers and nylock nuts on the other side. I'd like to take a moment here and give a big shout out and thank you to my dad, shown here in the video, helping make sure everything is tight. He really came through to help with all the boat projects and I'm not sure if I could have gotten it all done in time without him. I also feel I have to apologize for this dinky little rubber mallet I'm about to use in this next scene and throughout the rest of the video. I have an actual one on the boat, but I was too lazy to dig it out. Anyway, enough of me talking, back to doing things. All right, we're doing a test fitting for the wind vane. There, that's one. Is this the same, Is this the same thing? Yeah, okay. Now for number two. So which one did I, I drilled that yesterday, so that means this side. Okay. Come on. I may need, is my drill still up here? Oh yeah, right yeah. here. Thank you. Let's get this trued up here. There we go. There we go. Open the line mess. Come on. Yes. Come on. There it goes. There it goes. Oop. Oh. I'm moving the boat a little bit, aren't I? Yeah. Alright. Well, I need to bring it that way a little bit. Bring it out that way a little bit. I think she right. fits. She's angled down a little bit, but I think that'll change when she's actually bolted down and I have the supports underneath her. Because there are supports that go from here to there. So I think that'll work. I know she fits now. That was the important part. 
So I think I can take her apart, put the 5200 on, and really bolt her down. Okay. So the, I have the boat yard moving the jack stands right now so we can get to the spots that weren't painted because of the jack stands. Um, I don't know if you can see them over there working. So I think we're going to do today, because uh, if you can see, we just got that kind of mounted. Those two mounts are up are up there, they're 5200. Uh, now I gotta cut the bottom mounts. I gotta cut the bars to shape and that's easiest to do at my work They have a nice saw that will go through it nice and easy I have a hacksaw here, but I don't like using a hacksaw because it's not gonna be straight And then I have to drill a hole and they have a drill hole. They have a drill press So it's just gonna be easier to do at the shop plus um, So I think all I'm gonna do today is probably sand down the areas that uh, the jack stands were at put a coat of primer on there grab a packing flax the, a packing gland out of the packing cap and bring it to uh, to our local marine store fishery supply and uh, see if I can match the right size and get a couple of those while I'm there and uh, and then I can come back and tomorrow we'll finish mounting that guy completely and we'll have an autopilot and then tomorrow we'll also do a second coat of bottom paint and bottom paint the squares where the jack stands were and finish putting the packing gland back on and then we're ready to go in the water Sunday morning. So Ooh. one week haul out. That's, that's what we're aiming for. So yes. we're almost there. There's not too much to go. So close. <clears throat> I do have to say thank you to my dad and Yeah, his dad's been here like Joy, every single old, day. Yeah, my dad and Joy who came out and sanded with us the first day and and it's been kind of a group effort and I don't yeah, know what I'd do sure. without him. So definitely wouldn't have been done in a day no. or a day and a half with sanding if they didn't help. Nope. So anyway, that's it for me for now. And uh, peace. All right, it's the next day. And last night I took these bottom brackets to the shop at my work and cut them down to the length I wanted. In a second here, you'll see me trying to align where to drill the holes for the bottom bracket, but like an idiot. I didn't put any tape down, I started to mark up the transom. Nothing that won't wax out, but still, idiot. I just keep making more work for myself. I'm put the tape down so I don't scratch it up too much on time to test fit it here. And when I drill holes, it'll look a lot neater. That's a trick from my dad. That one was kind of shitty, wasn't it? Maybe you can put tape on better than I can. And at this angle. Okay. Got it figured out? I think so. So it's gonna be that angle. Right there. Right there. Okay. I think probably the best thing to do is to drill those holes, mount it in there, or kind of, and then fit this guy. Probably the best thing to do. All right, drilling holes again. Okay. You're not going straight. You're going straight in. This straight time. in this time, yeah. Right in with the angle. Yep. Ooh, that was thick. Okay. There. I can take this back out. And take this back out. 
No, so I'm, I, I marked where I need to drill the hole in this. So I'm gonna drill the hole in that. And then I'll kind of mock it all back up again. And then do the other side. Yeah, and probably do the same thing we did yesterday. Put, bolt, put nuts on the end just loosely to keep it there and then do the other end. And that should, should get us pretty close. But I gotta drill the hole first. So you're actually like putting it on, putting it on now? Mm-hmm. So you can see, I got it kind of uh, spaced out, got it spaced out and drilled already. So now I'm just putting 5200 kind of over the bolt holes. So nothing will leak. <coughs> Not that the water really gets up here, but you know, if you have a big wave, you don't really want splashes of water coming in, right? So now we are getting pretty close. There's one, and there's two, and I'll go stay. in. It'll stay. Yeah, it'll stay. Uh, well, I'll hold. I may need you to hold, man. But I gotta move the ladder. If I was thinking beforehand, I would have put the nuts on the top. But at this point, I can't. I don't think I'd be able. To, if I get them out, probably won't be able to get them back in again. So I'm just gonna leave it. The reason I want the nuts on top is because. If it ever came loose, you'd be able to see it come loose from the top. You wouldn't be, you can't see it when it's underneath. So the only way you know if it's loose, if this started rattling or if one day it just fell off. So I think we're fine now. Maybe if I feel ambitious in the future, I might try and change them around. But uh, I mean, they're nylock threads. It's unlikely that it would come loose, but unlikely things happen when you're sailing. So. Yeah. What? So all of you can hate me for going the lazy way because I don't want to take it out again. Yeah. That's fair though. I hate myself for doing it, but whatever. <laughs> we don't have enough comments for people to hate yet. Yeah, so. so you're good. Well, let me go. So we got our wind vane all set up, and I just kind of put put one on there to see how it works. And it, wind is blowing not very strong on here, but it's blowing a little bit, and it seems to be working so far. So that's exciting. She looks really good and yes. she's really sturdy. Yeah. Um, it won't move at all. It moves the whole boat before this thing moves. We'll see how straight she is when we get in the water because the whole boat's kind of angled back a little bit. That's something I'm worried about, but I think it'll work out fine. Besides that, it looks good. So the only thing I want to do now is run these lines over to the steering wheel so we can get that kind of set up. But before I get ahead of myself on that, more important things first, uh, water integrity. Uh, so I'm gonna put packing gland, take the rest of the packing gland, uh, packing, take the rest of the packing flax out of the packing gland and install with the new stuff that I got. So I'm gonna do that first before I get too excited with this thing. Look at her. I wanna do a picture. 
What's up? <coughs> Flapping in the wind like she's supposed to. So let's say we start heading more upwind. So it'd be kind of like that, right? If, if the wind was going that way, which you're supposed to point the edge to, we start going more upwind, it'd go like this. And it would turn this rudder down here and this would come up like this and watch the rudder over here. Turn. And if it came back the other way, and it'd turn back again, back over again. Look at that. Wind powered autopilot. Oh, the wind vane is up. It was on there, so it's bolted to the transom. So I gotta go through and put all the little nut on to really, really cinch it up. But there's our rudder. When you wanna not use it and put it up out of the way, it'll raise up. Nice. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, on the way down to Seattle, we can show you guys exactly kind of how it works. That'll be exciting. And we'll test if it works. So we'll see. Nice, nice, nice. The wind vane is hooked up. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Hold on. Yes. He's talking down there too. He's going to do, he's going to move it down there so you can see it working up here too. Oh, Y'all don't even know how exciting this is. This is so exciting, okay? Really, really, really exciting. We don't have to be behind the wheel every time we're going, which is a lot because it's directly in the sunlight. And we don't have to be directly in the sun anymore. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it go. exciting <laughs> oh that's awesome we don't have to be in the sunlight every day oh that's awesome everything's coming together all right well we're done with priming the outside as you probably just saw and uh now i'm on to changing the packing flax out of the out of the packing gland here so for years, the boat has always dripped. Now, packing flax will always drip. That's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to weep a little bit. Um, but it seems like, especially while underway, it would drip more than it should have. Because under when it's not underway, it probably shouldn't drip at all. Or at least close to not at all. So I'm kind of getting into it. And not knowing how the packing gland is, is kind of set up. Kind of guessing as we go. So I thought that the, that the actual shaft packing material would be back in the fixture that's attached to the hole over there. It's not, it's actually in the nut cap that screws on. So I can't get any tools. I don't have a pick here or anything. I can't get anything in there to pull out the old packing that's in there. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna dis, I'm gonna uncouple the actual prop shaft. I'm gonna see if I can pull it back enough in order to, uh, in order to pull that nut off. And I can take it home with me, get the right size packing because I don't know what size it is yet and put new stuff in put it back on and good to go again. So that's what I'm doing right now. And these bolts clearly have been taken off in a while. One of them's kind of rusted a little bit. Not not like deteriorated rusted, just stuck. So I've got my handy croil and uh, wrenches and see if we can get this thing apart. But that's what I'm working on now. What is that old saying? Every 30 minute job is one broken bolt away from being a three day ordeal. Well. There are two bolts that hold that clamper on the prop shaft. One came out easy and the other, well, it did not. It was completely seized. And of course, like any project I work on, I hurt myself. The wrench slipped off the head of the bolt and I slammed my thumb into something sharp down there. I eventually had to take a cutting wheel and cut off the bolt and install a new one, but unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of that. Well. Uh, I'm kind of stopping on changing out these packing gland or taking the packing cap off the shaft because uh, the shaft is stuck on the coupling pretty good. And I was fighting it too much. As you can see, I already banged the crap out of my thumb. Every time we do something. Every time. So, so I'm going to stop and thing on that one overnight and 
see if I can come up with a better solution tomorrow or something a little bit smarter than banging the crap out of my thumb. And I sprayed a bunch of uh, croil on it, let that sit overnight do its job, and uh, come back to tomorrow, maybe things will be loosened up a little bit. But yeah, I'm going to sit here and cry about my broken thumb. Contemplate life yeah, and our life decisions. decisions. <laughs> owning, owning a 40-foot boat would be fun, I thought. Hmm. Until the work. We'll see. Maybe, maybe alcohol will make it better. <laughs> That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're back with working on this packing gland. Um, I got some special little pick tools at Home Depot this morning. I've used them before on a couple things when I worked on packing flax at Westmar. So I know they work pretty good. So we're gonna give them a shot and see if I can get to, see if I can get one out of there. At least one, and I can take it and size the rest of them uh, at Fishery Supply and. Uh, and then bring the rest down here, pull the rest out, and put them back in. I'm also curious about how many are in there. I'm guessing, I think five are in there, because I'm pretty sure that's the standard. But uh, anyway, that's all I'll be up to for the next couple minutes here. <laughs> well, update. That took all about 30 seconds with the right tools. So that's what I get for taking a break and thinking about what I'm doing and actually having the right tools to do it. So I've got it. I've only got one out for now. I'm only going to take one out until I can size this one. And then I'll take the rest of them out tomorrow morning, probably. And uh, that's where we're at. So we'll uh, talk to you later. Let you know how this goes. Now I'm working on getting the, the packing out, the rest of it, because I only pulled one yesterday, right? So I'm getting the rest of it pulled out. Uh, and see how many are in there. So that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to take a little bit of finagling in order to get it out of there. I wish I could see what you were doing down there. Yeah, it's a little difficult, isn't it? So you can see down in there that uh, I polished up the shaft just a little bit with uh, scotch right bad, scotch bright pad and a little bit of sandpaper. And I pulled out, um, there's only two there, plus the one from yesterday and plus this one over here. So there was only four of those guys uh, in there, packing glands. Now, I already cut them to length. It came in one one little, I think, two foot spool. Um, but there are these guys, and I've got five of them. So I'm going to put five back in, a little bit more. And uh, you can see this one, if you look closely, I don't know if it'll focus, is frayed. So it definitely needs to be replaced. There's barely any wax left on it. So these guys, uh, I used them a lot with the last job I was at. With, uh, with our hoist, through hole hoists. And uh, they're graphite, graphite packing flax, and they're supposed to have less wear on the shaft and better sealing properties and all, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna put those in. And what you do is you put it around the shaft and you're gonna wanna stagger each end so each end goes on a different side. And uh, it's gonna be hard for me to show you while I'm putting those in, but um, I'll see if I can get some snapshot from Rye or something, but we'll we'll see. But that's how you do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put them in. packing flax are in I uh, four came out I put five back in there was room for it um, I kind of had to you'll see from the video uh, I had to kind of tighten it down and back it off again in order to push the packing flax further down in there but that's okay that's what it's made to do um, and then uh, I don't know if you'll see from the video but I wrote a number one and number two on the nut itself and that just let me know when to alternate between uh, the ends of the, of the flax. So maybe you'll see that going in. So I have tightened down the nut. Let's see if I can turn this thing around here. I've tightened down the nut down here. So it's you can still move the prop shaft, but it's a little bit of a resistance. Um, I don't wanna move it too much until there's water in there because water will act like a lubricant. Um, but uh, that's about it. Now, I apologize for the rest of the mess down here, but that is all because this thing just leaked 
uh, or dripped water pretty frequently. So I'm hoping with the new packing, we won't have that issue. So uh, we'll see when we go back in the water tomorrow. More than likely, um, knowing anything about packing, it takes about a month for them to really settle. Uh, so we'll go back in the water. It will probably leak water, which is okay. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, I'll have to tighten it down a little bit more. And then we'll run down to Seattle. And I'll keep checking it on our way down. When we get to Seattle, I'll probably have to tighten it down a little bit more. And then eventually we're going to go back to Pleasant Harbor, tighten down even more, keep checking it until it, it just weeps. So that's where we're at. And uh, that's it for the packing glam. Left and right. <laughs> um, and let's see. Turn. Oh, oh the wheel. There she starts goes. Turn the boat. Turn the other way. Turn the wheel. Starts turning the boat. Yeah.